585 million naira fraud allegations. Tinumbu suspends Beta Edu, directs EFCC chair to conduct probe. And 2024 budget, Nigeria's rising debt profile, a huge burden, labor. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. President Bola Tinumbu has suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, due to alleged involvement in the approval of 585,198,500 naira for grants for vulnerable groups in four states. Edu instructed the Accountant General of the Federation, Oluwa Tony Madeni, to transfer the sum to Bridget's account. Madeni confirmed that her office did not act on the request. Edu denied embezzlement and stated she would not embezzle government funds. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is currently probing Edu's predecessor, Shadia Farouk, over alleged 37.1 billion naira laundering. Joining us to discuss this is the Deputy Director, Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, Barista Kolawole Oluwadare. Uh, Kolawole, good to have you on Plus Politics virtually. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to uh, be here. Uh, to be very honest with you, I, I said this off camera and it's worth reiterating uh, uh, on camera that I am one Nigerian who, ex who is exceedingly proud of Serap. And to be honest with you, I am one who believes that people like you and your colleagues in Serap should be more celebrated because in the rut that this nation is gradually gradually moving into, I uh, thank God for voices such as yours. I, I hope I have not uh, quite uh, given you any emotional bumps. <laughs> it's, it's simply to say that we are just Nigerians trying to do our best to manage the situation we find ourselves and to contribute to a better society. How is Sarah taking uh, all this, these allegations galore, this uh, so-called investigations, the very, very horrid and putrid, uh, you know, uh, environment? Governance environment. How is Sarah taking this? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we are not surprised uh, at all with uh, these latest um, uh, discoveries. Uh, we can call them allegations as of time, but uh, they are discoveries of fact, but they are also allegations in the eye of the law. Uh, you recall that in 2021, we have filed a case, which is still pending in court against the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, that was for failure of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs to disclose details of the conditional cash transfers to uh, and the supposed deployment of Nigerians at some that time. And that is also one of those various advocacy decisions we're taking from time to time against the ministry's department and against the government, including the presidency, about uh, how public funds are being managed or spent in the interest of Nigeria. And that is why we've always said that transparency and accountability of of it is the corruption, but it is acting the enabler of corruption. So this could have been going on for a while. Not much more than this, I suppose, is going on across several ministries departments and agencies in Nigeria. But the opacity in the way these uh, ministry departments and agencies are run does not allow the NGOs to go. And that way, millions, perhaps millions of Naira that should otherwise have benefited the Nigerians in various ways and up in private funds. So in this instance, these funds that should help to leave millions of Nigerians out of poverty, 
What is the basis of the creation of the ministry in the first place? To cushion the effect of poverty, bring Nigerians out of poverty, and help Nigerians if perhaps they face any kind of, of crisis. And it is this same ministry that has been found to have been diverting these funds into private pockets. Uh, anyway, the, the president uh, directive to the agricultural agency, or you know, perhaps the suspension, is perhaps a, a positive step. But that is not enough. Uh, I hope this does not end up as another uh, act of tokenism. Oh, at best, uh, the, the law must take its course. And that would include investigation by the law enforcement agency, prosecution of individuals who might perhaps be found culpable, and then, most importantly, the recovery of these funds. And lastly, to put in place mechanisms that would ensure that this does not happen again. Not only the Ministry of Manager and Affairs, but in other aspects of government. I, <laughs> I, I think that you have to be surprised the extent of these kind of actions that go on in across the Ministry of Government and against the government. Uh, to be honest with you, Kola Wale, uh, we are in a situation in the studio now, I wouldn't know, we're having some technical glitches. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, as it is, Kola Wale, uh, the stronics of the presidency, uh, the stronics from Asorok, the Minister of Information, uh, may be somewhat engaging, but for somebody like me who's been around for a while, and for somebody like me who has seen it all, I, I'm not particularly impressed because we, we have a fundamental problem that is actually predicated on the warped methodology with which we are fighting corruption. Uh, let me give you a typical example. Beyond people like you and your colleagues in Serap, who do this out of sheer patriotism, out of sheer love of country, an average lawyer, an average lawyer, and I'm not saying all lawyers, but an average lawyer is ready to be bought at the right price by whoever may have stolen from government with the right purse. Why don't we create a system or or reform a system and have a system that will reward, that will reward diligent, uh, importunate fighters against corruption like you, so that when we get convictions out of the efforts of brilliant lawyers like yourself, brilliant young journalists, brilliant young forensic accountants who may come together and form synergies of professionalism to target these characters, they can be adequately rewarded. Uh, we may call it whistleblower's law, but the way it was done the last time was so shoddy that... So, what would be your response to the fact that I'm speaking as a disillusioned, disillusioned Nigeria who don't believe that anything will come out of it? Uh, thank you. I would really understand your, your sentiment. And that is uh, perhaps uh, shared by millions of Nigerians. Uh, angst will come very easily. It's to be skeptical. And cynical will come easily. Because again, they will see this over and over again. But we cannot afford uh, to do it. And like you rightly alluded, the issues, uh, they are in several forms. Yeah, this is social. We can call that social cultural issues. And that on the uh, that on the two options in Nigeria, there are the legal issues, see? and there is the political issues, which will speak to tribal religion and all the other integrities that uh, uh, pervade our society, that form the society. But much more importantly, we cannot afford to do which is like conversations like this. Sometimes, as as, as uh, it, it would appear unnecessary to some people, it's very important. And that is why you will see that the Constitution, even in its wisdom in Section 32, has empowered people like you to facilitate conversations like this. To so hold the government to account. And that is the aim of Section 22, that the media is able to uh, bring government to notice time and again of its obligations to the people. We cannot afford to give up. It, it works. The president has yielded 
to public outcry. The discussions that are taking place. Be investigated, and uh, uh, he has uh, suspended the minister. I want to believe he did not do that. Uh, perhaps of his own, uh, because he wanted him, but because against Nigerians, I've been talking about it. What we need to do is to sustain this interest, and I will perhaps call it advocacy, because it's advocacy is so driven by Nigerians talking about this, complaining about it. To ensure that it does not stop there, we continue to speak. Even the Nigerian government needs to, needs to go around the country, and I'm talking of politicians, when they do, when they want to canvass the votes, and they, they should also ensure that they listen to the voice of the Nigerian Senate. So we need to continue our conversations like this to educate the people. So there may be people who perhaps think that uh, we are having conversations like this uh, because of tribe politics or religion or perhaps of uh, some, uh, financial gain. We need to continue to have objective conversations like this to dissuade and educate those people that we are talking of good governance. These have nothing to do with politics. Because this money, and they are talking just of 500 million there, they are not much more I want to believe. You know how many people would have benefited if these funds had gone to where it should go to. You know, I would have helped them live better lives. And that is why we must sustain conversations like this. Uh, uh, the benefits may look uh, inconsequential, or we may not be able to measure it, but we need to continue to speak. Uh, doing nothing is, is that amount to die in silence. Uh, to be honest yeah, with I you, I don't think it's a good course of action. To, to, to be honest with you, um, I fully agree with you that uh, we can't afford uh, we can't afford not to persistently, persistently, all of us, irrespective of. Um, wherever, uh, may, whatever may be our station. And if we really want a country where we can live in dignity, honor, and peace, we must make sure that we articulately fight battles like this. It's just that, okay, let me give you a typical example now. Maybe some of us too in the media, maybe we are failing. There are copious laws bodies of laws, laws and laws, regulating practices that ordinarily, if these laws were to be heeded, we shouldn't be seeing or we shouldn't be having allegations. I must say at this juncture, I need to emphatically state at this juncture that we are not speaking as though anybody has been convicted. We are not indeed uh, uh, stigmatizing anybody because uh, she's not been convicted yet or none of uh, the people who are supposedly being investigated are convicted yet but at least we need to keep this in the public sphere but having said that are we too in the media talking to somebody like you in Serap now who should have the moral latitude to speak your heart are we too in the media doing well enough to complement efforts of people like you to make sure that the clear lights are, are shown or, or, or are lit on some of these uh, horrible incidences? Um, thank you very much. I, I, I would think that the, the phase is where I, yourself, and millions of Nigerians can speak on this issue. It's less about morality. I believe it is about the, the statutory duties that we have. Those moral issues have been captured in our laws, the Constitution being the, the problem of those laws. And that Constitution has imperfect duties citizens to be able to speak, to engage. And that means that citizens speak in various ways. The freedom of expression that is captured in Section 39 is not only to aid conversations like this, it is also expressed in, in various ways, including going to the polls. Every poll here, because people speak. When people cast their votes, all and against political parties, they are speaking, they are expressing themselves. So the basis of why we can do this is not necessary because we are, uh, we are we have a right standard morally. It is because the law has empowered us. 
having put people in positions of authority either by vote or appointment to run the business of the country for a limited number of times. And they are answerable to us. And as to the role media played, I would say that the media has is doing its best. If we're having these conversations as we speak, and that is the importance of that duty. What needs to be done more is for the people, the majority, the mass of Nigerians to understand and be able to act like we are doing now without that uh, narrow prism of politics, tribe, and religion. I want to assure you, sir, that the average Nigerians can see the fact. They feel the bitch. Or more often than not, the sentiment of strife, politics and religion that has divided us for several years appear to include that ability to objectively say, this is right and this is wrong. And that is why we will not be able to achieve that critical mass of people saying, enough, we need to stop this. And that is where conversations like this as, as uh, not uh, as striking in the effective, uh, effective as it appears, need to continue. Also, we have that majority of Nigerians who understand who come to that understanding that this good governance uh, is, is the dangerous of everybody. And I do think I will reflect that the media is trying within the context of crisis, the economic challenges that uh, we all face, including the media. The media is not used for the economic challenges that the media is trying with, uh, is to complement the force of situation. And even not you know, you know how many people will be able to hear this broadcast? even call in, send messages, you have empowered them by doing that. Otherwise, they might not have a voice to even uh, make their grievances as it is. Having spoken to the helicopter picture, uh, uh, legalistically, constitutionally, and indeed morally, I, I think it's about time uh, we visited what are the specific measures that Sarah uh, is perhaps taking on this allegation and the putrid allegations are uh, preponderating now in that particular ministry and indeed across level across ministries, departments, and agencies, in view in the view of the paradoxical circumstance we now find ourselves in the backdrop of Buhari's government or administration that we thought was uh, an anti-corruption fighting or corruption fighting administration now that we're getting to hear some very lurid, you know, from the central bank to the presidency, the very lurid. Uh, this thing, what specifically uh, is Sarah doing uh, in these respects? Uh, thank you. Uh, I would still recommend primarily that educating the people puts us in a better position to collectively bring the pressure to them. So, uh, again, and I think the question we can examine what is the motivation behind the president's action in suspending the minister? I do not think it is because one person spoke. And I do not think it is because two or three persons spoke. It is because Nigerians, the great persons, they are millions, are speaking about this and ventilating their grievances. And that made the president to act. Does that not show the power that the people have? The laws are not perfect. The laws are clear, actually. The Bureau of Public Procurement has its job well cut out in the Public Procurement Act. And to buttress this part, even the Attorney General of the Federation has created the regulation well ahead of this incident. Stating clearly, I think that's section 713 of the regulations, that public funds will not be paid into private accounts. So we cannot say that this is happening because there are no law system of procedures. No. How be it even that those laws are not perfect? I do not think this is caused by absence of laws. It is the impunity that has prevailed for a long time that has allowed this to continue. And that impunity is also passed up by lack of political will. From the end of it to the land, the president, to enforce the law against people that have been found culpable in the past. And that is why we need to continue this conversation to encourage the genius to continue to speak. 
to understand the nature of the Jewish state. So, uh, I, I cannot recommend now that the public procurement has to be amended to accommodate this kind of thing. And it is there already. And the Bureau of Public Procurement issues regulations from time to time that covers this kind of issues, including emergency procurement that happened during COVID. So this did not happen because there are no laws, procedures, or regulations. This happened, and, and I would think that this has gone on for a while. But again, people are not punished for infractions, and then there is no there is no incentive not to do wrong things. And uh, for people to continue to talk, will mean that the government will listen. I really think uh, that let, that let me uh, 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 combating uh, issues like this. Uh, 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 let me wrap up by uh, asking you to respond to this. It does seem that those who are in government have perfected the art of kicking the can into the long grass by just giving us the kind of uh, histrionics that we are getting now. Suspend the minister, uh, call the EFCC, um, machinery to investigate, and uh, this will last for a couple of uh, a couple of uh, months, weeks, and months, and uh, the public glare will be taken away from it. And just like the so-called uh, the uh, so former accountant general's uh, case, uh, a couple of months down the road, one Emir or one uh, one Oba or one Obi would then give the person chieftaincy title. Uh, you know, uh, they, they seem to have us, they, they seem to have us in their psychological pocket that you don't, don't worry, they will blow grammar. <laughs> How do you want to close on that? Uh, it, it's really sad that um, we have gotten to this point where a lot of people are losing their uh, faith in the democratic process. And I want to believe that those in position of authority, including the president, is aware that this is very dangerous. It, it is not a good sign, uh, not at all. And that is why the president in this instance must not see these, these actions as just another I really hope it's not another act of opportunity to keep the people quiet and then bring to go on as usual. Um, Ole, we are approaching that uh, Deputy Director, March. Socioeconomic that, Rights that, that, and that Accountability that. Project. We really want to thank you. Thank you so, so much for all that people like you do for the preservation of sanity in our society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We go on a short break, and when we're back, the second segment of the show will unfold.